Here is uh, a demonstration of my uh, my design, the elliptical profiler with a 31 millimeter barrel. I'm trying to do two things at once here. Um, I'd like to get it to where you can actually see it. Now here's a piece of cane. It comes right off my other machines, one of which anybody could afford. The um, materials for this cost about $12. $10 for the big old piece of steel. It is uh, 1 and 3 sixteenths. That's about 30 millimeters. Uh, when you add the uh, wet-dry 60 and 150, that's uh, just a little bit over 31 millimeters. Close enough not to make a difference. And all you do is rub it back and forth on the 60. Then to finish it, 150. Works very well. I do it all, all the measurements with uh, this little device here that I just dropped. So that's a uh, very inexpensive Harbor Freight, I think $10 for the meter and the rest is just nuts and bolts and bits of aluminum bar. And it uh, does a very good job of measuring. So, here we are. This is my machine with a 31 millimeter barrel. Um, I, we can provide one inch, 0.9 inch, just about anything you want custom for these things. But uh, 31 is what my fr uh, friend uh, Steve Bronstein in the San Francisco Bal uh, Opera, or I mean uh, Symphony uses for his uh, um, His measurements for his uh, cane. I, I believe the uh, machines that Udo with reads and stuffs provides is 30. So 31 is a little bit bigger and it fits and these things work just fine. I have a also have a pre-gouger I use. So between the pre-gouger and that rod with the sandpaper on it, I I don't need to have a contribution a contribution gouger, which is quite expensive. Steve Bronstein has one. I've used it. It's fantastic, but it's only a little faster than what I do. So now we'll start by scoring the back of the cane and also the center. This way, the uh, if you score the center also, the cane will break away and not block your progress when you're uh, when you're actually profiling. I'll make a couple of marks here, and I really kind of dig deep because I really want the machine to. Uh, make a defined edge at the collar. Now, can't really see this other than superficially, so here I am. I'm trying to get this high enough, and I, I really don't want my... Uh, oh, that's a little better. So, here we go. I'm just going to go across. Taking a little bit across the first time, then going back, taking a little more. Okay, so about halfway done. So I'll flip the cane, put it on the other side. Do a little more. It's 
not fitting exactly like I like it. So I'm going to do a little more uh, beveling just so that it fits in. I just do this by hand sometimes. I have a little machine that I sometimes use. Where is it? Here. I, it's a basically a one inch dowel with a razor blade. So what will happen is I bring try to get that angle right and do that because I really need a 31 inch or a 31 millimeter version of this to do these accurately. So this is really not meant for this. This is meant for one inch cane. This is 31 millimeter cane. So it's a little bit bigger. But, oh that fits much better. Because what, what I really want is for uh, the cane to go precisely in on each side so that my collars line up when I put the reed together. And if you uh, if you don't get that right, then you know, you know your blades don't match up. So you want your blades to match. Let's do this a little more. And with this machine, of course, the whole whole reason to have an elliptical profiler is you want to have a crescent shape, centered aside. And this machine always makes a crescent shape, just like a reed should be. This machine takes a lot of the work out of making a bassoon reed. There's a lot less finish work. Um, your sides are already down to where you need them, so you can concentrate on the tip as you're finishing your reed. So basically, when I make a reed, and I'm going to flip this again now, when I make a reed, I mostly work on the tip as the blade from the collar up to near the tip is, is just done. I don't have to deal with that. I don't have to worry about it. Now, I've seen some people put pieces of tape underneath the edges of their cane while they're profiling and they crack it and they do all the silly stuff to try to make up for the compromises in most modern profilers. My machine, my modification, takes care of all those problems. Once you're done, you just have to worry about the tip. And I suppose with a little bit more fussing around, you could even do better but the problem is if you do too much if you take too much off um, sometimes leaving that little bit on is exactly what you need to finish a read a little bit just a little bit more strength now this piece of can I think might have been gouge just a teeny weeny tiny bit too thin by maybe five thousandths so one on one side I'm getting a little peeling a little bit of the um, I don't know if you can see this but on one side there's just a little bit of the top the top cane the hard crust and that's because this is 60 thousandths and I should have it should have been 65 thousandths gouge but still we'll probably make a read and to get rid of that I'll do a little more um, cutting right at the collar and I will literally peel this back I will take this off and see what's happened there I'm taking that off to get to the the wood we want the the cane we want to vibrate and I'll just strip that off 
and hopefully at the end of the process you cut across again and go right right to the edge see all that that's just this cane coming off and you can do that coming back the other way using a razor blade it has to be very sharp a little secret there so I will save this read I'll save all this work I've done and I'll get a good uh, a good result so I'm gonna finish that right now real sharp blade going across and probably I'm, I'm being bad it's a good idea to use a, a wooden dowel <laughs> so you don't cut your fingers so you'll go right across and you can hear it you hear that little noise And all that came off. Now how easy was that? And also, and many times, I'll have to do this anyway, just to the last uh, eighth or sixteenth inch, where the, um, the cutting blade has a little trouble getting there. I mean, any, any profile, even the best machines, you'll still have a little trouble right right near the back where it just misses a little bit of that so again straight across with a razor blade and then using that same razor blade you come back this way really close digging down ever so slightly and you're trying to get that last little bit of schmutz that your uh, blade missed You get a nice defined edge and a continuation of your profile clear to the collar. Let's see if it wears that camera. See that? Look at that nice defined edge. That's done by hand. It's so good. Oh, you can see all the little ripples and problems. Maybe I should tape all my or record all my uh, read progress here and maybe that would be a step forward in technology but in any case you see nice defined nice defined collars that's what you want and you see right there look I, I can't even see that looking um, with my bare eyes and my good these are good glasses and I can barely see that but it's very clear there's some cane sticking up and I'm going to put my uh, razor blade back to work to get rid of those. And uh, But I'm going to do that off camera because I think you get the point. Alright, that's the process of using my profiler to get really excellent results. Um, and I think rivaling, if not surpassing, the Hertzberg design. I can actually adjust the center to side profile here by moving the cane either to the butt or to the center. If I move the cane to the center of the machine, I get less center to side deflection or less cutting. As I move toward the butt, I'll get more. And in, I know it's in millimeters, but in inches, it's about ten thousandths of uh, ten one thousandths. So as you move this back and forth, you can go from five thousandths center to side difference to ten, and and that's what Mr. Uh, uh, Chris Lieb recommended: center to side ten thousandths difference. So. Uh, I think I bored you enough with this. I think you get the idea. This, this is the only uh, profiler in the world that I know of that you can adjust the center to side uh, profile. And again, it's always a crescent shape. Always a nice crescent center to side, just like it is in the textbooks. All right, that's enough. Thank you.